What's happening, y'all? Real quick, just a quick little video here. I kind of wanted to talk about what I'm doing with the new Pride. I drilled those up yesterday, threw them a little bit, be able to give you a little bit of insight on why I did the two different layouts that I did. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the struggles I've had with Motive uh, and what I did to really change my perspective on what I need to be doing with their bowling balls. So we'll talk about that all here in a minute. Stay tuned. All right, so what we're going to take a look at as I just did a little bit of an illustration for you to teach so you can see the two different layouts. Now, these are all based on the first number that I did. I changed the first number on my norm on my layout. Um, I tried two extremes. I went two different extremes because I wanted to see a dramatic difference. Now, the, the worst part is, is when I do this review and you see these balls against each other, there's going to be a lot of people commenting and they're going to say, well, you didn't throw those the same. They didn't get to the same part of the lane. And you're going to have to be careful and watch because one's going to float and skid a little bit further than the other. Even though they're the same cover, the core is going to manipulate the ball quite a bit because of the dramatic difference in these two layouts. So you can see here the one on the left is, the, is a layout that I never do. Uh, it's a 25 degree first angle which kicks out that mass bias over here, kicks out that mass bias way to the right from my spam and uh, puts it over by my VAL. And then the second layout is something I do quite often. You take an ASIM and you do about 70 degrees. You put the mass bias by the thumb and that's pretty much kind of turns it symmetrical more or less. That's a pretty typical thing for me. Normally I go between you know, a lot of the times I will take an ASIM ball and make it symmetrical or make it closer to symmetrical, put a bigger first number on it. Because you got to remember with these numbers, the lower that first number, generally the earlier you're trying to get that core started. And the bigger the number, the later that core is going to, you know, try to pick up. So if anybody's paid attention to anything that I've ever said, you'll notice that in my own game, I generally have trouble getting the ball through the front. When the ball is hooking early, I struggle. So a lot of the times I actually um, lay out most of my equipment with bigger first numbers to try to get the ball and make sure the ball gets through the front. What I noticed out of these bowling balls is because the cover's cleaner, I was able to use this 25 degree first angle ball and it still cleared the front perfectly but it picked up the middle of the lane properly. So you'll watch these two balls go down the lane. The lower degree angle on the left picks up the middle of the lane really nice. The other one, the bigger degree, actually skids and comes behind the head pin, which is what I always see with motive stuff. With motive, you'll notice I always say, I, don't, I just don't match up with motive equipment. They don't seem to like me. Well, they don't like the layouts that I've been using, that's for sure because there's a huge difference between these two balls. So you're going to watch you're going to watch the first ball get down there, uh, the lower degree ball, you're going to watch it and it's going to pick up and it's going to truck through the pins just fine. And then you're going to watch the next one, it's going to look like it's going to look like it gets two or three boards further right and then it's going to come behind the head pin. So you're going to say, "Well, you didn't throw those the same. You didn't get it to the same spot." I'm throwing them lined up the same way. But the second ball, that longer, that longer, or that that bigger number, P V A L here, or V it, not V it, jeez, the bigger number angle, the first angle, is actually, um, it's causing the ball to skid further. It, the core isn't a lot; it's not allowing the core to pick up early enough to take over and uh, to to pick up and get traction in that middle part of the lane like the one on the left over here does so it skids a little bit further down lane and then it comes behind the head pin and then what i notice is when i slow down it looks a little better but then it's still a little too whippy so it gives me that exact over under reaction that i've always seen with a lot of motive equipment because of their cleaner covers i've always said i either need to have a higher rev rate or i need to take the surfaces down but when i take the surfaces down now they see the front part of the lane too much because now that ball is tracking in the front it's trying to see the front of the lane and that's not good for me that's not good for what i'm trying to create so um motive has helped me to come up with a good idea 
because it's kind of it, it's kind of the opposite of what you would normally think. You'd think, well, if your ball's hooking early, why would you want the core to get going? Well, I would never use this 25 degree angle on a big, strong, solid bowling ball. That's why lately I've used a lot of the strong solids because I can get them to pick up the middle of the lane, but I can use that big, you know, 70 degree, like my gems, all my gems are big first angles. So it floats down lane and still continues and goes through the pins because of the cover. I've, I've not had success with very many shiny balls because of that. My, the most success I have is with any of my 45 degree stuff. Um, and that, because that's closer to, you know, the, it gets it kicked out to, you know, right about here, but it's still not quite, that's still basically one of the strongest points is right there. Um, by doing this 25 degrees, it's actually helped me a lot with the, the cleaner cover. So I need cleaner covers with a lower first angle in order to combat what I think I'm combating or what I'm coming into trouble with. Cause you'll know, remember, remember the times when I complain about not being able to carry it's because I have to manipulate these types of layouts, these big angle layouts like this. Now, um, this obviously this portion doesn't matter when it comes to symmetrical balls because the first angle, you know, really doesn't come into play much on a symmetrical ball because there is no mass bias there. Mass bias pretty much always ends up where the 70 degree mark is, right in the thumb-ish, somewhere in there on a symmetrical ball. So it really doesn't come into play at all. You're just then kind of taking into consideration the CG with those you know few ounces there, a little bit of side weight and kind of play with a little bit, that's about it. So symmetrical balls, this isn't really that important. So I think what I'm, when I'm seeing, what I'm gonna have to do is when I'm seeing carry issues because my ball's coming either behind the head pin or overreacting, you know, front to back, I'm going to have to grab an, a, a shiny ASIM that has a low first angle to combat that. And I'm just going to have to float it down there and let the core just kind of take over. I So that at the end of the day, I think that's kind of my been my issue is I'm not allowing the core to really do what it's supposed to do. I've more or less been trying to take the core out of play a lot of the times. Um, and just allow the cover to do what it's supposed to do and not letting the cut letting the core manipulate how the ball is going to go through the pins or how the ball is going to pick up you know those those few feet before the end of the pattern you know because the uh you've got to get the ball to read before the end of the pattern but if i'm only getting it to read the back part of the pattern or when i slow down it reads too early because we're only talking about maybe a foot difference between these two bowling balls it's not much it's really not that visible with the naked eye. I can see it because, you know, I, I, I can see my own bowling ball reaction. I can see them go down the lane. On video, you might not be able to see it, but I figured that's why I would make this quick video so that way you can kind of be prepared for what I'm gonna be talking about in that review, which will be posted. It'll post here and it'll post on the Bowler X channel. So just kind of be prepared. This, these are the two different types of layouts you're gonna see. These layouts are gonna end up being, the one is 25 by four and a half by 30. And then the other is uh, 70 by four and a half by 30. So both have the same pin distance and the same third number to keep the pin taller. But it's just that first angle that's changing on these where the mass bias sits that's changing everything. Because now we're really, we're really changing where the weight is of the core and how much it wobbles versus doesn't wobble. So this one, this one you can see with the core going straight up and down like that on the 70 degrees, it's just kind of end over end and doesn't uh, allow the core to really wobble and try to take over much. It just kind of gives it a little tiny bit there and that's about it. Whereas this one, you can see it's sitting sideways and now in order to get back to its preferred spin axis, it's going to, uh, it's gonna have to migrate because it does migrate to the thumb. So eventually this will move over and it'll get over there. So, um, you know, it, it doesn't seem like much. I mean, visually looking like this, it looks like a lot of difference. On the lane, you're not going to see much of a difference. You're not going to, it's not going to look like much, but you're definitely going to notice it going through the pins a little bit better. So just kind of wanted to make this video to prepare you for what that is. And if you're having the trouble with the same thing, you're seeing over under, maybe you need to drill an ASIM ball with that lower, lower first number instead of having the big, big third or big first number. Try to get that core, try to let the core do what it's supposed to do. So Keep that in mind. I'm going to get out of here. I just want to jump on real quick and let you guys know this. Let me know in the comments below 
what uh, if you've tried both of these. If you've done, are you a big third, and big first number guy, gal, or are you a, uh, a little first number person? So I'm out of here. We'll see you guys later.